Good morning, all. I'm Simon Zhu, and I lead infrastructure and mobility initiatives at Accenture, and I'm delighted to be with you all today. I have the privilege of working with an incredibly talented team at Accenture to help DOTs, transit, and MPOs deliver the digital transformation of their infrastructure. You can connect with me on my LinkedIn to learn more. I'm also a new dad who drives a plug-in hybrid for our family car and rides my e-bike to the office with a helmet, of course, just for the record. Like many of you, I'm excited to be living in the age of transformation and being part of the change to make our infrastructure more safe, sustainable, and equitable. This transformation imperative is driven by the need to rectify the harm left by legacy infrastructure to people, to pivot towards zero emission travel for our environment, and to deliver a future where freedom of movement is accessible to all. With the passing of the IJA and more recently, the Inflation Reduction Act, we are witnessing a tidal wave of funding and programs to accelerate this transformation over the next five years. Let us then explore the transformation through the lens, through these lenses, as well as through uh, the digital infrastructure that plays in transforming our society for a better tomorrow today. Our first transformation focuses on safety. At the start of the pandemic, we saw a drop in crashes as roads emptied during the early days of lockdown. As traffic resumed, so did crashes. NHTSA estimated that nearly 43,000 people died in crashes last year, setting a 16-year record. Fatalities in every category went up, including double-digit growth in pedestrian deaths. This translates to an economic cost in the hundreds of billions from loss of life alone, not to mention the unfathomable pain felt by the families of the victims. The U.S. ranks last among developed countries in traffic fatalities. And despite efforts here to follow our European peers in committing to programs such as Vision Zero, putting it into practice has been a challenge. Community opposition, lack of political will, and a legacy of designing roads to minimize driver delay have posed a formidable wall to meaningful change towards actually getting zero deaths. And unfortunately, project justifications tend to build support only after a death or serious injury has occurred. But there is some hope. The US DOT earlier this year has taken major steps to implement a national policy backed by investment, announcing a shift towards a safe systems approach to planning along with the $5 billion grant program known as Safe Streets for All or SS4A. Over the next five years, MPOs and cities will leverage SS4A funding to eliminate traffic related deaths and provide infrastructure that prioritizes the well being of people over cars. What's different this time is that SS4A goes beyond traditional infrastructure to promote the adoption of innovative technologies and the deployment of, of advanced transportation technology. This is where digital infrastructure can play a key role. Imagine a future where planners have a better understanding of intersection risks, not just from crash data, but also near misses and deploy cost-effective treatments before a death or serious injury occurs. This is what cities such as Bellevue, Washington are studying, using cameras and LIDAR to better detect pedestrian movement and giving them the preemptive walking signals to reduce near misses at intersections. Early results have been impressive with the 42% reduction in near misses. Taking this a step further, we can harness the power of digital twins to model intersections at scale and leverage machine learning to recommend treatments that progressively reduce risk over time. Data feeds from cameras, LIDAR, and connected vehicles provide insight into travel behavior and allow the model to simulate risk reduction of different treatments, from signal timing and tactical urbanism to long-term changes. The benefit of this approach is that the model improves over time with machine learning to deliver cost-effective treatments and maximize safety and provides compelling insights to rationalize future safety investments. Protecting multimodal travel is essential, not only for safety, but also sustainability, which takes us to our second transformation. The US recently reached a tipping point in EV adoption. For the first half of this year, EVs accounted for 5% of new car sales. While that number sounds small, it's actually a big sign that mass adoption is right around the corner, based on similar trends from the EU as well as China. By 2030, industry estimates that EVs will reach more than 5 million in annual sales and make up nearly a third of all new car sales. While these trends do favor an accelerated adoption, 
It's also important to take a look at where consumers are today to understand the barriers to adoption, as well as the solutions to overcome them. A recent study by Consumer Reports found that charging logistics of when and where to charge ranked first among consumer concerns with range performance, total cost of ownership, and service availability, and cold, as well as performance in cold weather rounding out the top five. The shift from range anxiety to charging anxiety as the top concern indicates two things. The first, public perception of EV range performance has increased. And the second, we need chargers, a lot more. But how will we meet the explosive demand for EVs and for charging infrastructure? Let's take a look at the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, or NEVI for short. This innovative program, jointly led by the Department of Transportation and Department of Energy, will inject $5 billion into states over the next five years to deploy 500,000 EV chargers. Currently, all 50 states have applied for the formula grant and are waiting for approvals, which are expected by the end of this month. Once approved, DOTs will get to work on deploying chargers at scale, partnering with the private sector in many cases. However, deployment is really just the beginning, as NEVI-funded chargers must also provide a convenient, reliable, affordable, and equitable charging experience. For example, how will DOTs maintain a charging network with 97% uptime and 24-7 accessibility around the clock? To create this experience, we need a digital infrastructure solution that meets both current and proposed requirements. The solution has to be interoperable and work regardless of vehicle manufacturer or charging operator and connected to a cyber secure network that also provides real-time updates on charger location, on pricing, availability, and accessibility. The solution must also make payments as seamless as possible, acting as a clearinghouse between utilities to process millions of transactions per day. With NEVI funding and private partner support, we can develop a ubiquitous charging network that's available to drivers 24-7, 365, paving the path for accelerated EV adoption and decarbonizing transportation. Our third transformation looks at how the federal government is achieving equitable outcomes while increasing the safety and sustainability of our infrastructure through a policy known as Justice 40. The basic premise is that 40% of benefits from federal investments must flow to disadvantaged communities, also known as DACs, who have been marginalized, underserved, and overburdened by pollution. Justice 40 is a key underpinning of both SS4A and NEVI, which require at least 40% of safe streets improvements and of EV chargers, respectively, to de be deployed in DACs. And it's long overdue. For example, Low-income households experience traffic deaths at twice the rate of median income households. Those who can't afford a car live in communities with lack of sidewalks, no reliable transit, and streets that are designed for speed, leading to preventable tragedies repeating themselves year after year. The same applies for environmental impacts. While air pollution levels have decreased over time, many of these households living near high-speed traffic areas experience higher levels of disease, death, and even loss of IQ compared to more affluent peers. While the administration has taken important steps with policy and funding to tackle these issues, translating them into benefits is another story. How do we make sure that these programs address the actual needs of the community? And how do we measure success? First, we need people who come from the communities themselves at the table where decisions are being made. This is where organizations like the Clean Cities Coalition play a key role. Funded in part by the Department of Energy, Clean Cities is a nonprofit with chapters across the US that engages with underserved communities to listen, inform, and educate around policies aimed at decarbonizing transportation. They in turn act as a voice of the community, working with DOTs to guide implementation of programs such as NEVI, to ensure that they truly address the needs of the disadvantaged communities. This is another example of the partnership between the Department of Transportation and Department of Energy to advance transformation through NEVI. Second, we need to rethink how we measure success and look beyond trying to tackle safety, sustainability, or equity as independent issues, but rather 
as intersecting issues that are interrelated. And our solutioning approach needs to evolve beyond point solutions that are siloed and tell an incomplete story. For example, high-speed arterials that lack sidewalks also tend to experience heat islands and stormwater runoffs, which are getting worse due to climate change. Narrowing lanes and creating chicanes slow speeders while creating room for street trees and planted medians, cooling the surrounding area, filtering runoff, and decreasing flood risk. By merging problems, the number of beneficiaries increases, making infrastructure projects viable and decisions durable. This is where data and digital infrastructure can play a key role by providing our government and planners with tools needed to target treatments that can deliver on multiple fronts and help them transform communities into safe, sustainable, and equitable places to live. Thank you.